Well, I get a call from Keith Kloss, you know, and known Keith since I was 15. So Keith's like, hey, they got this thing over in China that's called Wild Ball. I'm like, all right, well, what's Wild Ball? He's like, you know, they have these tournaments that go on. You can make, get paid. He's like, you can easily make a G a game. Okay, all right, you know, if you G a game, that's not bad. So he told me about it. Well, I'm trying to research this stuff doesn't exist. So I'm talking to my buddy, uh, Marcus Elliott, and he had played in uh, Uruguay, and we'd battle against one another. I see him pop up over in Hong Kong. I'm like, the Hong Kong League isn't good, but he's playing in the ABL. So I'm like, okay, playing in the ABL, new squad, whatever. I was like, how'd you get over? And he told me about his guy. So anyways, I you know, contacted, and his guy's like, well, you know, I know you're a little older. You know, I got to see. I'm just like, what did Marcus say? He's like, well, he said you ball. Well, it's not like he's going to lie. So anyways, I go over, and, um, you know, the guy, you know, Lucas, he got me over to China and I'm playing in my first wild ball tournament. I'm playing outside on blacktop. I stopped playing a blacktop when I was 25. I'm like, I'll do this. And then they're like, well, they're going to pay you 500 bucks. 500 bucks is like a men's league game. So go out there, have a quick 40, you know, sit down. And I'm going up against, you know, five imports, you know, do my thing. I'm like, yeah, here you go. I'm like, really? That's it? Right, well, let's see, kind of see how this goes. So next thing I know, I have people calling me on, on WeChat, which is, you know, China's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And I'm getting these messages at, you know, middle of the night, midnight, 1 a.m. I got a couple games. It's kind of like I'm watching, I'm living the life of, like, uh, the movie Saw. You want to play a game? You know, <laughs> it's, like, it's literally like that. I was like, do I want to respond to this? So then it's like, yeah, I got a couple games. All right. Well, how much do you, you know, they're like, you know, how much do you play for? All right. Well, I've just played for 500. So let's just go ahead and say 750. See what they say. So I'm like 750. All right, cool. 750. I'm like, all right. All right. Cool. Let's see how this goes. So next thing I know, I have an airline ticket sent to me saying, hey, get to the airport. Go to the airport. I fly three hours. I landed in some town I can't even pronounce out in the middle of nowhere. I'm off the Chinese. I'm off the tourist grid at this point. Anything happens, nobody can find me. And get a random Chinese dude who picks me up. He just has a sign with my name on it. And I get in a car with a stranger. And, and we ride for another four hours. So ride for four hours. I'm in the middle of nowhere. And I'm using WeChat to translate things. You know, and they're just like, yeah, so happy to see you. So then the boss goes, ah, oh, so happy, so happy, so happy. And I'm like, okay, whatever, bro. Like, just tell me when we play. And he's telling, you know, the guy takes me to this nice restaurant, have this lobster, right? The lobster's been cut up and divvied up, but they keep everything in the shell. So they have everything in, in China, you know, all about decoration and show and all that kind of stuff. So I have this huge lobster and everything. And we're eating, and next thing we know, the tentacles and everything else start moving because it's been on ice. So, you know, you got basically uh, the nerves and everything else where <laughs> this dead lobster is moving around. Tail's starting to kick and everything else. So it's like, this is definitely different. Go ahead and play. Do what we got to do. We play our three games for the championship. The boss goes, I like you, I like you. Gives me an extra 2,500. Hey, this is cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? So this is what starts up. And so I'm in China making this quick cash, in a sense, in some ways kind of guaranteed cash. You just never know when these games are popping up, and they pop up all over the place. I'm trying to get back to a league. So I'm doing this. I'm working out with some teams. I played with um, in the Hong Kong League with uh, with a team you know which was it was just get paid like they, they took good care of us and i mean the the team wasn't the best of teams on a nice guy and he took care of us you know and took great care of us to, to be truthful so ended up in hong kong doing some things i'm still flying back mainland in china playing in just the local men's league on saturdays and they're taking great care of me there and at one point i'm just commuting between hong kong and china but that's what what had gone on for the first year, you know, making all kinds of money, stuff is crazy. The girl I'm dating at the time, you know, we're, you know, we're, she's going back and forth. 
And I'm just like, hey, you know, I appreciate you coming over. Hey, can you take some of this money back? So she's you know, bringing money back and forth. Money's flowing. Got my meds. Basketball's happening. Things are great. So then um, opportunity came up in the ABL, which was basically about a year later. And they needed somebody just to fill in. So, they, you know, the team, the Taiwan Dreamers brought me in. Ah, you know, you're 39, blah, 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 blah. We don't know. Don't let this number fool you. So I go ahead, do what I do. You know, so everybody's looking for me to sign for the whole season. They got seven owners. And the, the one owner, he decided to bring somebody else in because he didn't know what to expect. So that's what it was. But then a handful of months later, and yeah, they went ahead and brought me in, you know, brought me back and all that kind of stuff. And that was an interesting situation. Um, you know, with that, long story short, management brought me in. They had fired the coach. He liked me. New coach came in. Business transaction. So that's all it was, you know. And so back to the wild ball stuff. I'm doing wild ball here for the next, you know, year. And then COVID hits. And so I'm over in China seeing COVID. And it's like, eh, I think it's time to get out of here. So ended up coming back home. And so just, you know, having to wait, you know, because basically the world stopped for basically a year. You know, so we had the, you know, the, the blip from, you know, the Marvel movies, from, you know, the Avengers with, with Thanos. So we have our blip for the year, come back, and now just trying to see which way to, to go with things. Just as an aside here, um, Andy, I only had up to 2018 in your doc, which you sent me. That's why I was uh, saying had. <laughs> just FYI. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So it's Wikipedia version. I knew that it was continuing on, but uh, mh. no. But he also dot, said dot, earlier, dot, dot. he said earlier on that he wasn't done. So yeah, was, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, it's you just, just didn't hear that. No, no, I heard it. It's just you know, <laughs> I, I, I got, I do what I do. But it was a any, long day any, for you. After any, I had well, a long day yesterday. Yeah, no kidding. But um, at, at any event, I mean, that China story is one of the more interesting ones we've had in the podcast. Yeah, it's not going to lie. Yeah. That is, uh, that is quite something. Just kind of randomly showing up places and people are like here are a couple hundred dollars here's a thousand bucks I mean, like yeah i mean like money started getting crazy at one point like like super crazy um and, and this is this is just like like what what are these games i'm trying to little, i'm trying to wrap like, my head around pe- it. people all right so we go to the park and we play a pickup game depending on what it is this is or, this was going to be exactly my line of questioning. Is this, this yeah. sounds like pickup, but somebody's got some money and wants a ringer, basically. Right, right. And so, the, and depending on what the ringer is and the rules, you may have just one import that comes in. You may have five imports. It may be open, and you may have no Chinese guys in your team. Right. It just depends on what the situation is. And so, with the games, I mean, they're we're playing some of these games in big stadiums too, big arenas. And with these arenas, I mean, they're packed, you know, 15, 20,000 people. So it just depends on where you're kind of at. Some of them are literally, you're out in the middle of the sticks. And it literally looks like, you know, being over in the former Yugoslav with buildings half built and bombs looking like it's gone off. And you have 10,000 people watching you play outside. That you know, is, I... It's, it's it's crazy. I don't even know how to describe that. Like, I mean, that's literally what it is. And I mean, I've had a couple other um, you know, kind of magazines who do kind of podcasts and stuff like that. And everything that they've seen, they're just like, this is really the craziest thing because you, you'd never be able to describe it because you're literally out in the middle of nowhere. It's almost like an informal league. And, like and, there's, and no, it, there's no season. There's no, no league. There's no, you know, you don't have teammates. Like, are people managing, coaching these teams? Like, it might be, it might be me, you know, using my phone and being like, hey, let's translate, do that. Okay, just do that. (laughs) And literally, that's, that's what it is. That is just amazing. So, like, I I have a crew that I was running with, you know, Mm -hmm. so I, you know, my crew. This basically sounds like black market basketball in a way. Yeah. It, it, It is. It's like mercenary basketball because you have just some random person contact you. And so, you know, they make, because you got the middleman, the, the middleman's being told from the owner, hey, this is how much money we have, blah, blah, blah. Well, the middleman wants to get paid. So he's trying to lowball as much as possible, right? You know what the situation is, you know? And if you've been in places around playing as a professional, you know how you got to, you know, work your business. So you go back and back, back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes, hey, you know what? I'm good. 
And the next thing you know, they're calling you back 15 minutes an hour. Like, okay, okay, I'm sorry. You know, I can get them. All right, make it happen. You know, and it's one of those things like, I don't trust you. So you need to send me half the check now before I even look <laughs> to, you know, leave my place. Yeah. And I mean, so there's, uh, yeah. So, I mean, you play hard nose, you know, hardball with stuff. And next thing you know, like I'd be Corey Bradford who played at Illinois. Corey and I've been buddies since our senior year of high school. So we played on the same all American team at Nike camp. And Corey was over at the same time. Corey, see you at the airport tomorrow. How much? You already know I took care of it. Just here's your airline ticket. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, and that's how we do things. And he'd show up and he's just like, all right, so who do we got to kill? I said, you already know what it is. You know, so that's how we go ahead and, and play. You know, some of the tournaments, you have to win the whole tournament to get paid. Wow. So when that's the situation going on, and, and you have like pros, because like my team, we have like pros. You know, so Corey, he's played a bunch of years abroad. We have Duke Cruz, he's played a bunch of years abroad. Uh, you know, we had, uh, you know, big, we have big Jason um, Hannibal. He's from Toronto, Canada. He's played, you know, for a bunch of years. You know, so we had like pros who could play. So a lot of these guys who come to China just because they look the part, they may have the tattoos, they got the look, whatever, whatever. They can't play to save their life. And they start, you know, do a lot of talking because for them, just like you know, you're saying earlier, this is their MBA, right? Being over in China, having people want to take the pictures and blah, 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 blah. That was their MBA. You know, having their ego stroked, all that kind of stuff. When you've played places, you played in the NCAA tournament, you've been in league camp, stuff like that. You ain't worried about that. You're just worried about doing your work, get your money, go home. You know, and that's what, what it was. So some of those guys would run their mouth. All right, we got to destroy these guys. <laughs> And that's what would happen, you know. And you'd, you'd show them the difference between a wild ball player and a professional player. 